Space, the final frontier. This is the podcast State of the Federation. Its continuing mission to preview strange new ships, to seek out new builds and new combinations, to boldly go where no show has gone before. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the Federation. Welcome back to State of the Federation, your one stop for all things Star Trek Attack Wing strategy related. We have a great show for you today. And just to get things off with a nice surprise, I have a new layout for you guys. I know my poor, my poor co-host can't see it and they don't know what's going on, but uh, I'm sure they'll be very excited about this in a moment. As you can see, I have a full complement of of assistance today we have dan dan say hi hello good old dan from uh trek talking we have tucker tucker how are you doing today we are the borg the borg have a new car i'm super excited will <laughs> <laughs> the borg have assimilated a a, a petroleum based vehicle yes Nice. We have added its technological distinctiveness to our own. <laughs> nice. And last but certainly not least, we have David. We are the Federation. The Federation now have less super toys. <laughs> Sucks <laughs> to be you. <laughs> so, all right, guys. We have a full slew of topics for you today. We're going to start off with the... OP2 prize, which is going to be Korok's Bird of Prey, also known as Assimilated Vessel something, 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 something. Some Eight big zero number. seven two nine. Oh, whatever. Who cares? <laughs> Thank you, David. I, I'm looking at. at I'm, I have it in front of me, so that's the only reason I know. I'm glad some. I'm glad someone here pays attention, Tucker. What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> After so that, I we're going to be going over, over my, the over recently docs. the recently released turn suggested tournament format changes and whether they are a good or a horribly, terribly awful, ineffective thing. There we will definitely have arguments on both sides, I'm sure. And after that, the a, a wonderful little list that I've encountered in North Carolina that I have dubbed Lore's Puppets. And it's because we love Lore and having all of this little slew of crew upgrades. Which, of course, will be completely illegal under the new uh, things. Yeah, it's, it's a little sad. But let us get started with a happy note, and that is prize shifts. We all love new prizes. Yay, prizes. Yay, prizes. All right. So, here we have Korok's Bird of Prey, both the Klingon and the Klingon Borg versions. So, starting with just our Klingon ship, Korok's Bird of Prey, the unique version, 4133, it's a Burrell class, so the same thing we had back in Dominion War OP2 with the Chitang. It's got a tech, two weapons, and a crew, same slot upgrades. The Evade, the Target Lock, Cloak, and Sensor Echo. It's special ability. When you initiate an attack at range 1, while cloaked, your opponent rolls minus 1 defense die. You cannot deploy this card to the same fleet as Assimilated Vessel 80279, which is, of course, the Klingon Borg version of this, of this ship. As for the ship itself, I'd really rather have the Chitang. Agreed. I yeah. have both. <laughs> it is nice to have another Burrell class with a tech slot, though. Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm pretty happy. I mean, look, I like... There is very little in this pack that I don't like um, when it comes to the ships. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, it, okay, yeah, it's a free scan. Um, it doesn't take an action. You don't need to disable anything. You're probably going to be doing it anyway. So it's, hey, it's a free bonus. Just not as cool a free bonus as re-rolling all your attack dice. Uh, yeah, but I mean, that that is pretty completely broken. And the fact is, <laughs> I mean, look, since you're probably going to want to run, it strikes me as likely that you will want to run a the 24-point version just to get that tech slot. 22. I see... Sorry? 22. Uh, yes, sorry, you're, you're right, 22. I was thinking of the Borg one. Um, you're going to want to run the 22.1 just to get the tech slot. Mm -hmm. um, I consider that, I consider the tech slot to be the unique version's ability, and the actual ability is just sort of gravy. Yeah. It'd be really nice if the generic had this, but considering that it's a cloaked ship that has only three hull, having to put up with three shields that you're probably never going to have enabled, you really need a spectacular ability to want to cloak this ship. And mm -hmm. this just, I don't think, is it. Dan, did you go over? Uh, did you go over this prize already on Trek Talking? Yes, sir. What did you guys think of this so far? Uh, I was more impressed with the cards uh, that came with it than I was the ship. Mm -hmm. uh, I I do like a, a bird of prey in the assimilated in the assimilated vessel that rolls me some five dice with an extra shield, but then really. With the extra shield, that means cloaking's almost kind of not necessary. I mean, being able to cloak, the, I mean, the advantage for hit points, you can't cloak. Uh, so the real advantage of this is the five dice, which for a bird of prey, even an assimilated one, is pretty nice. I mean, now you're talking a 26-point ship that's competing with 34, 35-point ships for damage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, that's cool. No, no, go ahead. Uh, I gotta watch my shows. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> go ahead. Uh, I forgot what I was gonna say, actually. So please continue. <laughs> <laughs> See, I have to watch my shows. Uh, yeah, yeah. I would probably never run the actual bird of prey version of this. It'd probably be strictly the assimilated version because I'm getting five dice. It's twenty six mm -hmm. points. And I'm getting a board tech while I'm at it. So, yeah, the other three cards for ship purposes are, are just going to take up room in my box. Mm -hmm. so, you're, so you're comparing it You're comparing it to the assimilated one because you can't have both in the same fleet, right? That's why you're making that comparison? Yes. Okay, yes, I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. So assimilated vessel 80279, Klingon Borg dual faction, five attack, one defense, same three hull, but it has four shields instead. Um, makes me wonder about cloaking on this at all. When attacking during the modify attack dice step, you may spend three drone tokens to choose any number of your attack dice and reroll them, even if they have already been rerolled. Uh, same action bar, cloak, echo, evade, and target lock. 26 points. Comes with one we two weapon, one crew, one tech, and one Borg slot, and the silhouette of a Romulan D. Derridex class. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> um, I'd run it over generic Vorcha any day. Hmm. Agreed. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. I mean, this one, you don't even really... I don't really see you cloaking this one at all, either. No. It depends mm -hmm. on what you got in that Borg slot. Oh, that's right. Because with a Borg slot, you can take a Blade of Hull Armor. Right, because this is a 26-point and 24-point generic that does not limit, like, the Scout Cube what you can put in your Borg slot. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, you could run uh, you could run a Blade of Hull Armor, you could run Borg Shield Matrix and just have all the defense dice. <laughs> um, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of good options there. Um, as I said, this is, if you're not going to cloak them, which I admit some people will do, this is a strict upgrade over the uh, generic Borgia. Mm hmm and it also would have, uh, I don't have the base tokens with me, but it should have both the forward and rear arcs again. So you could use, uh, mm -hmm. for those of you who do use photon torpedoes with rear arcs and things like that. Well, this is also, I mean, if, if look, let's say you've got a venue 
that's banned uh, all board ships with a 360, which is not an uncommon house rule in this day and age. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the this is the only 9090 board ship, so Borg missile. 30 points, 9090. Can you Borg missile out the rear arc? Uh, oh, you know what? No, you wouldn't be able to. You're right. God. I play too much Borg. <laughs> Playing too much Borg messes with your ability to... Uh, yeah. Recognize arcs. Yeah. I don't know what a firing arc is. God. <clears throat> you mm -hmm. simpletons and your firing arcs. Uh, whatever. Yeah, I think for Borg Missile, you're going to have to wait until RAF 3 for the Galar class to at least get the 180. Yeah, that's true. That's going to be nice. By the way, according to Terry on Facebook, uh, her preview uh, for the TAC Cube 001 is actually going to include that too. Oh, awesome! And she said that's coming out before the end of the month, right? Yeah, so we should we should actually probably by the next episode be able to take a look at it. Ooh, fun! That'll be pretty cool. Yeah, there you go. There's the next episode: Tac Cube, Galore, Rochester. Bam! <laughs> Very nice. But yeah, the only the only other thing I'll say about the ship would be the uh, spending three drone tokens to reroll attack dice. I mean, that's almost essentially the. Uh, the Chitang's ability right there, so. Uh, what it real actually, no, the most comparable thing for me uh, is the um, four-point tactical drone off the cube, and we all know how much that one gets used. The target lock one? Three drones to maintain a target lock. Yeah. Yeah, see, this is the same ability. I'll use I'll use the queen so I can actually get you know a cloak and a and a sensor echo on the one turn I'm actually going to cloak with this thing. Cloak and an echo. Because <clears throat> queen can use any bar any action off your action bar. Um. Yes. Even if you are. Oh wow! If... You know what? Wait. Did I? Did you? Wait. Hold on a sec. Uh oh. Confirm for me that this says even if they have already been re-rolled. Yes, it does say that. Yes. Oh, wow. I like that a lot better now. That's better than the Chitang. Good God. A second reroll is always fun. Yeah. I'll put Borg Missile on this all day, every day. Shit. Pardon <laughs> my language. Sorry. Even, wow. even if you only have a 90 degree arc. That's almost I don't guaranteed care, four hits. dude. Hmm? This, Burrells are maneuverable. I will get you in my 90 arc. I will get you in my 90 arc once and then roll twice. And wow, I'm actually really hmm. impressed by this now. Yeah, even yeah, if you I, are doing the uh, the red 180, I mean, this is still, it's not an action. So target lock's not an action if you already took it beforehand. And then the double, the second reroll is in an action, so. Or if you prefer, um, how many, hold on a sec, let me just check something. Yeah, the, the tactical drone um, that lets you reroll dice is four drones. So, so one, one for the reroll and three for the second reroll? Yeah, and then use hive mind to refill. Or you can switch it out with the queen from a reinforcement sideboard or something crazy. Well, there you go. Queen, uh, or, or, well, no. Just run Borg Queen, the uh, tactical cube version. Free action target lock. All kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, <laughs> no, this is, this. I'm impressed. Pretty, ni pretty nice ship overall, I think. Mm -hmm. The yeah, simulated I, I version, agree. at least. It's, I it's, love, sorry, go ahead. It's got the Borg touch. Which is everyone wants to play Borg. <laughs> That's correct. You know what? By the way, I noticed something the other day. Um, the uh, the um, the uh, at this point, with once once Tactical Cube zero zero one and the Galor get released, the Borg will have more ships in the game than anybody except Federation. Oh, really? Crap. Yeah. I think so, yeah. But they won't have I more copies of Worf. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We may not get Worf, but we do get this guy. We have Captain Korok. Our Klingon version of our captain is a four-point Klingon upgrade. Upgrade. Four-point Klingon captain. One talent slot, six skill. When you initiate an attack against a ship at range one, at the start of the deal, damage step of the combat phase, disable one active shield on the target ship if possible. 
On the bright side, he doesn't have to be cloaked. Mm -hmm. Works almost as well as damage if you're going to be one-shotting them or one-rounding them anyway. But uh, other than that, I, I'm feeling like it's kind of underwhelming. Um, hmm? I, I'm okay with, with uh, plus one damage every turn. That seems good. Especially on a ship that's giving you five dice to roll if you're using the assimilate. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, well, on any other Klingon ship, a Vorsha or Negvar or something. Yeah. I mean, combine them, with, uh, combine them with the Negvar, you could, you know, with the Negvar's action plus this guy, that's a, a bonus couple damage every single turn. I'll take it. It's like the shields for, come back. Yeah, for Captain Skill 6... I mean, mm -hmm. compared to the Federation, that's not real great, but the Klingons have a very limited captain uh, roster, so six mm -hmm. is actually pretty decent for for Klingons. Six is a seven against anybody except Federation and other Klingons, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. What is, what's the usual Klingon captain lineup? Because I haven't played them since I did like Martok, Gowron, and uh, Koloth. Martok, Gow Gowron, and Worf is still probably the most typical one. Mm -hmm. But which one I would mean, you rather have? In, which one would you rather have Korok instead of? Oh, I'm pulling up Stardock to give me my little mm. captain. Or Space Dock. Captains. Uh, I guess he's got a talent, so maybe he's just, maybe he's better than Worf. Yeah, I don't know. Worf is really good. Um, I might I might actually say Gowron, depending. Mm -hmm. Gowron I... is Gowron is neat, but plus one attack die plus one attack die is nice, but well, let me put it this way: Would you rather plus one attack die or plus one guaranteed damage? Mm, plus one guaranteed damage. shield damage, assuming the ship that he's firing at has any shields left by the time it gets to his turn to fire. Uh, he yeah. will be your second guy to fire, so... Oh, yeah, yeah, I see your point. Yeah, and against clo another cloak ship, he's not doing really anything, so it, mo it moots uh, his point. Yeah, He's not bad. I he's mean, got he's the crazy playable. face. <laughs> that's his... That's that's his big draw. He's almost as crazy faced as Gowron. Duras. <laughs> yeah, why don't we have a Duras captain yet? Uh, that's actually a really good question. That'd be really nice. I mean, if we're getting Remans for Remans as Romulan uh, alignments in in the Scimitar, which we probably will be. I mean, you should be able to get Duras and and Lursa and Bator. I mean, come on, man, they're iconic. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you could, I mean, that's another way to use the Bird of Prey model yet again, so I don't know why Whiskers hasn't done that. That's a really good point. Yeah, they, they could do, what, what was the Bird of Prey name in Generations? They could put them in on, the three of them on that one. Yeah. Mm. I'd enjoy that. Mm. <laughs> All right, Korok as a Borg, though, is kind of strange because I believe he appeared on a Sphere and not on a Bird of Prey, but hey, whatever. Well, what they, I mean, look, I think the point was between Assimilation Target Prime and the prize ships in this one to mm -hmm. get an assimilated ship of every faction. So I think that I'm willing to, uh, I'm willing to um, forego the uh, consistencies. Yeah. But you just said every faction. Does that mean I'm going to get an assimilated Bajoran Interceptor? No. Oh. Mm. Every major faction will. Fine. Kill all my hopes and dreams, why don't you? I want a Borg Jem'Hadar. That'd be kind of cool. Still want, still no founders, still no... Ugh. But anyway, sorry, Korok. Borg Captain, four points. He gets six drone tokens. When you inflict damage to an opponent's hull during the deal damage step, you may spend one drone token to convert one normal into one critical. So, a little bit like Toreth, who is not a bad card. Uh, one of the few captains that again comes with six drone tokens, and he is unique, so he is a target for uh, 
fleet captain, one of the very few that the Borg have. Yeah. Mm. Other than that, kind of standard for Borg tactical drone abilities. Spend a drone token to do kind of an action. I think he's alright. I think, for me, he becomes my second or third choice for Borg captains, though. Um, first and second being the Borg Queen that gives you the double action and the tactical drone that lets you reroll. The original tactical drone. Yeah. Yeah, the original's tactical drone is still the best. I mean, I am a huge fan of that card. Yeah. On the bright side, though, if you're, at least with the top one as the Borg Queen, you if you're taking her as your Admiral, then this would be a pretty regular selection. Yeah. Because other than that, you're just... Is there even another good tactical drone? Well, I got the list uh, here. I kind of like the counterattacking tactical drone from the uh, from the Scout Cube release, but he's only got two tokens, man. Yeah, that one's kind of meh, but I am actually the one I'm actually fond of is the one from the Scout Blind. Uh, after you before or, or before you move, you can uh, take off an Ox Power token. Power token. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty useful. I'm very sad that though that the uh, Klingon version of Korok has a talent slot, but the Borg version does not. Um, yeah, that's a little disappointing, but, um, yeah, Yes, we are talking about the Assimilator Burrell right now. Math guy. What? Someone was just check someone was just double checking what we're covering right now. Oh, I see. But yeah, so, very disappointed that Captain Korok, the Borg, doesn't have an elite slot. Oh, well. He couldn't use the Klingon talent anyway. All right. Anything else on the on these guys? Or are we moving on? Take that I'm as moving. Good. On. All right. Next up, we yeah. have Vinculum. We have a Borg upgrade, five point Borg upgrade, which means this can be taken by Scout Cubes. Is it worth it? Action, disable this card to dis repair one damage to your hull or shields. Or, action, disable this card to target your ship and every friendly Borg ship within range 1 to 2 of your ship. Add a drone token to every target's ship's card. Ship's captain's card. No ship can exceed its captain's starting number of drone tokens. I'll uh, take this over Borg Alcove all day, every day. Really? Well, I guess it's pretty uh, useful. It's pretty useful for getting Borg drones on other ships. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's the fleet. Yeah, this is this is not uh, something you put on your own ship to use drone tokens. This is uh, this is your main healer here. Mm. Well, yeah, I mean it heals your ship, or it gives drone tokens to the rest of your fleet. So. With these assimilation ships, you can viably fit a three ship. If I mean, if you're good enough to have all three of them, you can do a three fit or three ship Borg fleet. Put this to repair one ship and feed tokens to the other two. I'm cool mm -hmm. with that. I don't like the disable though. I suppose you could try triggering it off of the Borg Queen Admiral's action, but after that, it's going to be every other turn at best. Um, no. No? If you trigger it off the Borg Queen's action, uh, if you don't mind giving up the action on one of your other ships, you can use it and then use use it with Borg Queen and then re-enable with ship's ap action. That's what I was thinking. So yeah, it could yeah. be a nice little combo, but I don't see I don't see you really fitting three ships with this in here, which I think would make it the best deal. You try three scout cubes, but well, if you do well, this one's uh, this one here is what twenty two mm -hmm. with the generic assimilation. Mm -hmm. What's mm -hmm. the goal? What's the last? What was the generic assimilation on the last one? I forget off the top of my head. Twenty four for this. Uh, the generic assimilated uh, enterprise was like thirty, maybe thirty two. 
What about uh, the Romulan from last month? Uh, that's definitely got to be thirty-four. Okay. But, yeah, it'll be it'll be tight with ninety points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you did get three of these, you could run three of the uh, three of the Borg Barrels, and that would be twenty-nine points each. Yeah, or if you on, a la on the last uh, resistance is futile, if you pull the Borg Scout as you're blind. Oh, that could be useful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. But, uh, yeah, that's too much ifs. Not bad. But, yeah, definitely, you know, just just, just still in the vein of recharging your drone tokens. And mm -hmm. I haven't really seen a good drone token recharger any better than this, so. Yeah. I'll take it. It's a lot better now that we have to have three ships in our fleet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else do we have? We have a tech upgrade data node. At the start of the game, place three mission tokens on the card. Each time you defend during the roll attack die step, you may discard a mission token from the card to force your opponent to roll minus one attack die. No ship may be equipped with more than one data node tech upgrade. Three point Borg tech. Nah. Mm. Eh. This is this is one of those ones you keep in the back in case you boo boo. Mm -hmm. Oops, I did a stupid move. Let me save my ass. Yeah, I mean, and I believe that rather than use your incredibly valuable text a lot, your solution there is play better. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, it's not bad, but, that bad considering how how heavily people are uh, adjust, modifying their dice rolls these days, their attack rolls especially. And this is essentially three extra HP for three points. But then again, it is taking up your tech slot. Yeah, I mean, would you rather have this or projected stasis field or feedback pulse? I mean, look, feedback pulse for crying out loud. Mm. Feedback mm. pulse. If you you have you have to be more conscientious with your spending. An eight point feedback pulse might not be the way to go on a forty two point ship these days. I'm sorry, I can't hear you over the sound of put it on the sideboard. <laughs> <laughs> Good old sideboard. I'll tell you my plan for that, by the way, when we uh, when we get to the new rules. Um, spoiler alert: all the crew that add slots makes sideboard even better. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I still like the fact that data node is a nice cheap Borg upgrade. Yeah, we don't actually oh, have true. a lot of those. That's correct. Well, we're getting more these days. It's like they they went straight to the high ones, and then they. Uh, they started filling in the gaps. You know, Hive Mind on the last prize ship. Magnus, Magnus Hansen, Hansen for a one point crew. Okata Hedron. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you mean the Okata Hedron? Yes. Both. Either. <laughs> All right. We're never we're never gonna let that one go, are we? Oh no, heck no. Never. <sighs> not, not until WizKids hires us all to fix their game. Man, wouldn't that be great? Let's see. Uh, last but not least, we have a couple of Klingon upgrades with this pack. A uh, basic set of five-point photon torpedoes. Decent enough if you're running a, a 90 ship because of the rear arc usage. Mm. The question is, were the Borg version of the photon torpedoes just better? Yes. That came with the Sung. Do we really need another set of, of Klingon photon torpedoes? No. Well, maybe the first ship or Klingon ship a person gets, you know? That's true. The first, ship a Klingon, uh, uh, the first Klingon ship a person gets is not going to be the Resistance's Futile 2 OP prize. Hey, if someone just came into the game like last month or so, what's the chances that the only thing they bought were Borg? Ooh, they should have a that's... starter set and Borg. Uh, I believe starter comes with Klingon photon torps. Am I wrong about that? But it's the Vorcha kind. It's not the forward rear arc kind. Oh, that's true. Ah. Actually, is there, a, is there a Klingon photon torps that has forward rear? Let me see. Yeah, the Karaga. The, the Karaga one, yeah, okay. Yeah, and that... <clears throat> and the Kronos, Karaga Kronos 1. Those ships, Kronos 1, not so much. Karaga is a pain to get these days. 
Is it? Is it like like the Defiant? No one can find it anywhere. It's the Klingon Defiant because Worf is such a good captain. It's yeah. like Defiant. Fed had to go there for Quantum Torps before um, Enterprise E. So Karaga, you have to go there for Worf, and he's not getting reprinted. Mm. Um, although I guess the Collective OP Blind Booster has uh, forward rear photon torps, but whatever. That's weird. I cannot find my Sung Photon Torpedoes on this list. Did I never put them on here? I probably didn't. Oh, hold on a sec. I'll find them for you. Sung Photon Torps. What oh, they destroy at? one additional active shield. That's correct. And if they're fired from a Borg ship, plus one die. But they do not... I do not see the forward rear firing arc part on these ones. Yeah, so. they, don't, they don't have it. They don't have it. They're pretty bad. So, yep, yeah, here's your forward rear firing arc. Mm-hmm. All I right, can't. okay. Not a complete waste of cardboard. Hmm. Warrior Spirit, when attacking at the end of the deal damage step, you may discard this card to roll two attack dice. Each hit or crit result damages the defending ship is normal. Each blank or battle step result, your ship suffers one normal damage to its hull. This roll cannot be modified, and the defending ship does not roll defense dice against this damage. May only yeah, be purchased don't. for a Klingon captain, four-point Klingon talent. Don't ever use this. Just don't. Yeah. Let's let, let's be honest. I stab at thee is better. At least that's what I'm thinking. Look, nobody. Remember we said last time about the a plus one attack die for damage to the hull. Let's let's not do that. Let's not do that. <laughs> this is this is your gamble. You know, you either kill the opposing ship or you kill yourself. We love dicey games, don't we? No. Do you, you not? <laughs> Am I the only one who who who's noticed that uh, the um, herf derf uh, that basically the game is moving quickly towards not rolling dice for defense? Like between the Borg and enhanced hull plating and to rule and all that stuff. Get Have, having things that mitigate dice rolls into reliable results. Mm -hmm. That's crazy talk. We don't go for that talk around here. This is a dice game. <laughs> I must throw green dice. It is my favorite. Mm. Is ah, that a Star Trek game and not a deck building game? Oh, God, no. We're not <laughs> having that argument. No. <laughs> oh. Down that road. I'm just throwing it out there. And uh, the, the game is what it is. And certain cards let you do different things. So you can kind of make it what you want. Be like, hey, us board players weren't really rolling defense dice in the first place. That's correct. Especially so we'll negate everybody else's defense dice to make it even, right? Exactly. We yes. are the board. All right. And that is it for the Burrell. Any final thoughts on this one? If I get one, I get one. I'm not like like pushing hard to win it just for the fact that I'm not good at this game to begin with. I'm here cuz I have my pretty face. But uh <laughs> but I'm not going to cry if I if I don't take one home. I'm not super impressed. I'm going to try for 3. I'm not even going to lie. I ran 3 Vorches back in the day. Uh the way I look at it, this is a 2 point discount on running 3 Vorches um that can take Borg upgrades. So, I'm very happy. Hmm. Well, that's because you're a Borg lover. Uh, it, it, actually, this this has nothing to do with um, this has nothing to do with Borg and uh, nothing to do with Borg. <laughs> what? Nothing. I'm just making fun of your nothing to do with Borg. Um, no. I mean, look. Before I was a Borg player, I was a hardcore Klingon player. So he was one of those. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm looking at these guys and my my um the only thing really I can think when I look at them is um you know so, something along the lines of uh Oh god, no. <laughs> Why? Oh. <laughs> Thank you. 
it's so terrible coming through your microphone too. <laughs> yeah, I'm figuring I'm working on a better way to play sound files, but uh, for now that that'll do. I should have known that we don't was coming. Need to turn into that show. <laughs> hey, hey, I, hey, I, I, I know. Look, if Dan is here, I felt like it would be okay. We've, we've got to make him <laughs> feel comfortable and at home. <laughs> I feel at home. Yeah, see, but, but in all seriousness, I mean, I am actually a really big... Some of the upgrades on this ship I could take or leave. Yeah, Vinculum's pretty nice. Korok's, both versions, is an alright captain, not great. The elite talent is garbage. Um, you know, Borg no data node is mad. But, but, but for me, I really like this generic ship. And since we have to play three ships now, um, I can field. I can see myself fielding three three Borels in the future. You know, that could work. They are so far yeah. the cheapest Borg ship we have available, really. Absolutely. And if I can find a way to add a tech slot to the generics, then um, I'll uh, go ahead and throw projected stasis field on there and call it a day. Hmm. Could work. I like it. Mm -hmm. I'll at least go for one of them. Probably two. I don't know if I'll ever run them, but you know, completionists, man. Yeah. Besides, they look neat. They do. Uh, actually, by the way, um, that reminds me. I meant to. Uh, I, I I think I posted this in the community, but it got sort of lost in the mayhem. Um, if you are a person that knows how to use shapeways, and you are a person that knows how to extract models from Star Trek Online. Let me know, because what I'd actually like to do is in Star Trek Online, they have a pretty sweet gear set that changes the look of your ship to look assimilated. And if we could print that model, it would be a really cool way of doing the Burrell instead of just doing like a dinky, like, oh, here's a Burrell with some gray stuff painted on. So message me or post in the community, whatever. That'd be cool. That's actually in the online one. Yeah, um, there's a you, there's a set that you can put on any ship, and it makes the ship look assimilated. So, if we can figure out how to get models out of the game, then what we could do is we could um, we could put them in shapeways, and uh, you know, print them through shapeways, and uh, get actually cool assimilated ship models. Just a thought. Hmm. I'll send you some screenshots after the show, Will. You'll like it. Cool. All right, moving on to our next topic. We have the, all of the wonderful changes to the suggested rules format as soon as I find them because I forgot to re-prepare this ahead of time. 